everybody um we are of course in corinth you can see behind me the temple of uh, of apollo not to be confused with apollos who was a christian preacher apologist in the first century apollo the god but of course um the apostle paul spent 18 months here and what's interesting about the church in corinth is we know probably more about this church that paul planted and pastored than we do any of the other of uh, paul's churches and and because he of course wrote two letters to the corinthians uh, or two that we still have um, but we know that paul spent more time here in corinth than any other church up to this point in his ministry and we have to ask why did he have to spend so much time here why did he camp out here for 18 months and let's just say he knew they really needed it okay um you know a lot of times we think about the New Testament church and sort of um, idyllic, pristine, noetic sorts of um, um, worldview where we talk about, let's, if we could only go back to the New Testament church, right? If we could only go back to those times when things were simpler and more pure and easier. Uh, but clearly, if we, if, we, if we think that, then we really haven't read the book of Acts. We certainly haven't read the book of Corinthians, right? And um, so we have to ask, well, what happens when a, a pagan people that live here in one of the epicenters of ancient Greece, um, under the guise of all these pagan rituals, uh, um, idolatry, temple prostitution, what, what, what happens when you take that group of people who've never been exposed to the gospel, okay, who then uh, come to faith in Jesus Christ, what do you have? Well, what you have is a mess, right? <laughs> what you have is a mess um, because um, although, and this is it's important to know, the, remember the difference in justification and sanctification. Justification is the one time act where we are declared not guilty and righteous before God because of the righteousness of Jesus. That's one time our salvation is secure. We can't become unjustified in our faith. And Paul reminds the, the Corinthians that they are justified. But he then he exhorts them to continue in sanctification. In other words, just because they're declared righteous doesn't mean that they are righteous. <laughs> there, there, there is this huge gap between here is who you are in Christ um, as a theological position, and then here is who you, who God is growing you into being, who God is changing you into. And when we think about that process. That's just gonna be a messy process. It has been for 2,000 years, it will be till Christ returns. And so a lot of times when we think about um, the church, maybe we're tempted to get down on the church or to be impatient with the church or run away from the church, um, become de-churched, de-institutionalized, deconstructed. Let's remember what Paul said to the Corinthians. He, he wanted them to, to be reminded about who they truly are. He says, or do you not know, when he's writing to the church in Corinth, that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Now listen to this. And such were some of you. But you were washed you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. Just think about this. Paul planted a church in Corinth with homosexuals, thieves, adulterers, drunkards, revilers, and swindlers. Uh, it's a reminder that God can save anybody, anytime, and anywhere. But so many of the problems in Corinth came as people wrestled with their true identity. Who, who am I? And this is a, it's a great little reminder because we live in an age of what I would call hyphenated Christianity. I am a fill-in-the-blank hyphen Christian, okay? I'm a this kind of Christian. I'm an anxious Christian. I'm a fearful Christian. I'm a, I'm, you know, whatever our particular malady happens to be in our day and age. And Paul wants to remind us that is no longer our identity. We, we are no longer hyphenated. We are just Christians who struggle with 
sexual sin. We're, we're, we're Christians who struggle, you know, with addictions. We're Christians who struggle with fear and guilt and anxiety, but that's not fundamentally who we are anymore. And so Paul spent more time with this church than almost any other, um, continually reminding them about who they truly are, who they were, who they are now, and how to continue to grow in his, the grace of Jesus Christ as they moved toward that process of sanctification. And that's a messy process, and it, 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 it's, but it's a glorious one. And so if you find yourself um, someone who is a Christian but struggling, just remember the struggle is a sign of the, of the work of God's Spirit in your life. If you're not struggling, okay, um, we have to say, is the, is, is the Spirit really being activated in your life? But as you feel those points of tension of, of, of not being who you want to be, not, not attaining to what you aspire to, not meeting your goals, then Paul says that in itself is an assurance that God is working out his salvation in you. And so the, the, the church in Corinth had to be reminded of this all the time. We need to be reminded of this all the time. And so when you look at the church in Corinth from now on, don't, don't, don't sit in judgment. <laughs> How could they do things like get drunk at communion? How could they do things like um, be in an inappropriate relationship with their stepmother? How, can they, how could they divide into parties and factions? Instead of standing in judgment, just remember, such are we but rescued, sanctified, justified by the grace of Jesus Christ. All right, let me pray for us. Lord, remind us um, today, as we think about this church from 2,000 years ago, of who they were. And let us take great hope in that, that you can save anyone, anytime, anywhere. But Lord, let us take hope mostly in the fact that you have saved us. And that while our identity was at one time as a sinner, but we are now sanctified, justified in Jesus Christ, struggling to grow in grace by your help. So, Lord, we ask that you would indeed help us, empower us by your spirit, just like you did the Corinthian church 2,000 years ago. In Jesus' name.